coming up on the Northern Sun Showcase. The spring sports are wrapping up, and the NSIC earns another national champion and multiple All-Americans. Augustana has a strong spring season, sending two teams to the NCAA Sports Festival. Minnesota State Baseball takes home the hardware, as does a Concordia University standout. And Southwest Minnesota State gives back to the city of Marshall. Pull up a seat. The Northern Sun Showcase starts now. Welcome to the Northern Sun Showcase. Life and Balance, Division II Athletics in the Upper Midwest. I'm Mike Woodley, along with the Commissioner Butch Raymond. And it's been a very busy spring. And Augustana will focus on first because they've been, well, standouts this spring. It has been a tremendous spring for the, for the Vikings from Augustana, especially on the women's side. Uh, started off by uh, winning the, the softball regional. Actually, they finished Minnesota State Mankato won our conference. Minnesota State Mankato won our conference tournament. Uh, Augustana finishing second in both of those by one game. And then they came back and won the region, beating Concordia to move on now to the Elite Eight or the World Series of Softball. And then to lose a heartbreaking game, 5-4, a walk-off home run to the eventual champions. But what you, an outstanding. You do know what a walk-off yeah, home run is? I, I watch many of okay, them. Okay, all right. Yeah, that's how it works. But let's hear now from the coaches and the players on a great spring in softball for Augustana. Just even getting to this point is such a huge deal for us and for Augustana. I haven't been there since 98. And um, I'm just, I'm so proud of the way that we, we got here and we battled and um, held the number one team to the nation and to 10 Indians and did come out victorious. But... Everybody can see the heart and dedication in our team and our five seniors, you know, we tried to bring everybody along with us and yeah, we ended like that, but we still had a great season. These guys um, should take a lot of pride in what they've done in their four years and how they've gotten the program back to a national caliber and now they're part of something that's going to just continue to keep getting better and keep getting better. All right, more Augie kudos now. Let's move on to tennis where they're doing very well. Their second yeah. championship, spring championship in the Northern Sun on the women's side. Uh, it was the tennis team, they, the second year in a row that they've won this. They actually went undefeated during the regular season in duel. Came into the tournament, won that, had an opportunity to host the regional where they were defeated by Colorado Mesa in a close match. And let's hear now from the coach and the players. We knew that they were going to be close matches. And, uh, and once again, it's just kind of taken point by point and uh, just really trying to focus on uh, every game and, you know, and good things can happen. I like the conference tournament because really it kind of shows who has been working throughout the season. And, you know, the conference matches throughout the season are important, but what really matters is this tournament, you know, to qualify for regionals and stuff. And so everyone's really ready to fight. And so it makes it more intense. And I think I personally enjoy it. Let's keep the Viking theme going in golf this time, Butch. Let's give them their third championship yeah. then in the spring. Uh, the women's golf team uh, for the third straight year won the NSIC championship. Uh, they actually won it only by 54 strokes uh, in the tournament. Went on and, went and captured the region and then uh, on to the uh, sports festival in Louisville where they finished 10th. And a very, very tough course, though, as we look back on the championship and uh, a very challenging course for Augustana in that national championship. If you interviewed most of these student athletes here um, this week, this, they'll say this is probably the hardest test of golf. I know the coaches are saying it. Long, long, rough. Uh, I mean, these are the highest scores that you'll ever see at a national championship that I've seen in five years that I've played. But you get a bad hole out here, and it takes a minute to regroup and get back. So I'm so proud of the way they finished because it is a really hard golf course. Twelve teams in the nation get here. There's 245 Division II teams. We're top 12. Now just go play. Well, now I'm going to say it really tonight. I mean, that they got to just loosen up. They were tight, and they should be, because it's a very difficult golf course. Very challenging. <laughs> there is any. There's nothing <laughs> as a non-challenging golf course that I'm aware of, anyway. Well, playing with you is enough of a challenge. Absolutely. For me. There you go. We also had. We should mention the other members who also qualified Please. from the conference, and that included uh, some very talented golfers: Krista Weisauer of Southwest Minnesota State, uh, Emily Kerber of Saint Cloud State, and Paige Schmidt of Winona State University. Congratulations to them as well. And another story, Mike, that uh, we'd like to share with the audience about a young lady that really worked her way into the national championship was a member of the Augustana golf team, and that's Kelsey Bortnam. Uh, she was uh, diagnosed with an illness and had to go through a series of treatments, a bone marrow, and, 
Uh, Mike, uh, uh, what a wonderful story. I, I find this to be one of the most amazing and uh, inspiring stories, really, of the whole year. Because uh, for those who weren't aware, Kelly, Kelly Borton suffered an, in, an illness and had to undergo bone marrow transplant surgery. And that is one of the more difficult things to bounce back from. She lost her hair, she lost her strength, but she battled back and joined her team and took them all the way to join them in, in the national championship. And it's just an amazing story of inspiration. And anybody who knows Kelly, or Kelsey already knows that, but what a story for the whole conference and her teammates to look on and say, wow, somebody can really come back from all of that. So congratulations to her. We should also move on to the all sports standings because that's always a big competitive thing. And in the spring, we're able to wrap up the whole year and compile it into a final standings to see who came out on top. Well, it's a commissioner's delight. And uh, we do give an award, uh, the U.S. Bank uh, All Sports Award. And this year it was won by Augustana. And obviously those three championships they won in the spring had a lot to mm -hmm. do with that. They had a very close uh, race with Minnesota State Mankato. They actually ended up uh, being ahead of them by 8.2 points, which in, when you go through the whole year is really a marvel. So as a commissioner, you obviously we want to have a winner. But more importantly, we like to see the teams that challenge each other to get there. And uh, Augustana was uh, there, number one. Minnesota State Mankato was number two. Winona State was number three, and then rounding out the top four was uh, Minnesota Duluth. Still to come, baseball and track and field here on the Northern Sun Showcase. The Northern Sun Intercollegiate Conference is a proud member of NCAA Division II Athletics. This week's Northern Sun Showcase is brought to you by Wilson, the official football, basketball, and baseball of the NSIC, by LJK Companies Incorporated, a full service solution to your team's lodging needs. By Impact Sports. Contact Impact Sports to get your swoosh on. And by East Sultan's Web Services. We make having a website easy and affordable. For more information, visit eSultans.com. We all train differently. It's about numbers. What works for you might not work for your teammates. The same thing goes for staying hydrated. As you compete, you sweat, and it leaves your body at a unique rate. At a certain point before the game's even over, you sweat so much that your performance suffers, unless your numbers are right. Through superior research, we've unlocked the formula to optimize those numbers. The math for you is simple. If you've stopped saving, let us help you start. Savings today and rewards tomorrow from U.S. Bank. Save a little every week with every purchase, every paycheck. Watch your savings grow. When you reach $1,000, you'll earn a $50 rewards Visa card. Earn another $50 when you keep it for a year. Save for a wedding day, a family, or your house. Just start. All of us serving you. U.S. Bank. I chose Division II because athletes graduate at a higher rate. I can stay closer to home and be an important part of the community. I chose Division II because I can double major. And take part in campus activities. I chose Division II because classrooms are smaller. Students have more time with their instructors. And I can compete for a national championship. I chose Division II for all these reasons and more. I chose. I chose. I chose. I chose, I chose Division II. Let's talk track and field, Butch. Well, I think first of all, we'd like to thank the University of Mary for hosting our conference track meet. This was actually the first Northern Sun event that they've had a chance to host, and they did uh, a great job of putting on uh, an event that saw 13 records get broken. Let's get the recap. Tom Ackerman has the details. Nine records were set during day two of the Northern Sun Intercollegiate Conference Outdoor Track and Field Championship. Mankato's Jarrell Hancock led the way for the first place Mavericks, first in the 400 meter run. Then in the 200 meter dash, Hancock sprints to the finish line in 21.21 seconds. The MSU Moorhead Dragons would finish second overall in large part to individual performances by Brady and Laquan Robinson. The two tied for the highest point totals during the two day meet. Robinson won the 400 meter hurdles in a time of 53.09 seconds. And here in the 110 meter hurdles, he sets an NSIC record, timed at 14.13 seconds. 
Dragon teammate Clayton Foster contributed in a big way with an NSIC record performance of 3 minutes 53.01 seconds in the 1500 meter run. Despite the impressive 1-2-3 finish by Augustana in the 5,000 meter run, the first place Mavericks take home their third title in four years, earning them one last victory lap. The Merry Women showed off their true colors today with a convincing 200 and a half point total. Thanks in part to the two NSIC record performances by Melissa Agnew. This finish of 2 minutes, 8.99 seconds, sprinted Agnew to a national second place ranking in the 800 meter run. The other NSIC record would fall for Agnew in the 1500 meter run, clocking in at 4 minutes, 22.40 seconds. Mary would pile on the points with a 1-2-3 finish in the 100 meter hurdles, led by Kristen Nelson and her NSIC record-setting time of 13.92 seconds. Mary teammates Janet Johnson and Melissa Walker rounded out the top three. More NSIC records would fall. Moorhead's 4 by 100 meter relay team would set a new mark of 46.63 seconds. Then the Dragons would heat it up in the 4 by 400 meter relay with an all-time conference best of 3 minutes, 47.98 seconds. And Paige Pollard of Wayne State earned the highest women's point totals during the two-day meet. Here, she sets a new NSIC record with a time of 1 minute, 14 seconds in the 400-meter hurdles. In the end, the Marauders hoisted their flag for a fourth conference title in six years. And Butch, how about Lexi Williams, a national championship for Minnesota Duluth and the Northern Sun Conference? Her first time competing in a national event, she came home a national champion. Uh, actually, the second women's champion that they've had at Duluth and the, and the full, fourth overall national champion. So congratulations, Lexi. We had 48 student athletes out there, uh, four, four relay teams. And from that number, 22 of them came home All-Americans for the Northern Sun. Northern Sun always seems to do well in track and field. This year, another year where the teams really came alive. And, and to have to do that in the high altitude of Pueblo, Colorado, where it's a little bit more difficult in many cases, it's really an outstanding achievement for the conference and all the individuals. Very, very pleased with our efforts. Not to mention the teams, those relays. That's the epitome of, of team sport and teamwork. Well, congratulations to all of them, and let's uh, move on, and we'll remind you, baseball's coming up next as we continue on the Northern Sun Showcase. So, what kind of financial help are you looking for? Maybe you need insurance to help protect you. Benefits to help your business reach new heights. Or a retirement plan to invest for the future. Then again, Maybe there's someone who can help with all of those things. The Principal Financial Group will give you an edge. The Northern Sun Intercollegiate Conference with nine team national championships since 2006 and 24 individual national champions, the NSIC has developed into the premier Division II conference in the Upper Midwest. The NSIC boasts 14 schools competing in 17 sports, all committed to one common goal, athletic and academic excellence. The Northern Sun Intercollegiate Conference, a proud member of NCAA Division II athletics. If you've stopped saving, let us help you start. Savings today and rewards tomorrow from U.S. Bank. Save a little every week with every purchase, every paycheck. Watch your savings grow. When you reach $1,000, you'll earn a $50 rewards Visa card. Earn another $50 when you keep it for a year. Save for a wedding day, a family, or your house. Just start. All of us serving you. U.S. Bank. There's a time and a place for sports. The place, Mid-Continent. 
and with more dedicated sports channels than ever, including local sports on Midco Sportsnet. The time is anytime, all the time. More sports on Midcontinent. It's on. Build your own bundle and save today. All right, Butch, let's talk baseball because uh, three teams from the conference ended up going to the regions, but getting that far was quite the story. Well, first of all, we had a, a great spring, so mm -hmm. the, the conference race was extremely competitive, and Minnesota State Mankato won that by one game over St. Cloud State. So taking the uh, six teams into the tournament hosted by Minnesota State, and I want to thank them for what a great job they did. Uh, it was uh, just uh, one of those tournaments that was so exciting to watch, and Minnesota State did win that, uh, beating St. Cloud State in the championship game. So they moved on to the region along with St. Cloud and, as you mentioned before, Winona State. So three teams from the conference go on to the regional and capturing the region title in Mankato, the host team, the Mavericks, who go on to win. So it was Mavs win, Mavs win. Let's hear the reaction after they win the regional. I give our guys a lot of credit. You know, we were ahead, we were behind, we hung in there. Obviously, total team effort. We couldn't be here without every one of our teammates, uh, support from the administration, uh, more importantly, our alumni and friends of the program. It's very special to win this in Mankato. A couple years ago when we won in, in uh, New Mexico, we maybe had a dozen people there, but to play in front of our, our hometown and our friends and family really means a lot. This is just unreal. I mean, how many People can say they've been to the World Series, but now this is twice for us senior, you know, senior guys in the team. And going into it this year, um, we have a little bit more to, uh, you know, go after. We're expecting to win a couple games when we go there, and you know, hopefully we can pitch very well like we did this tournament, hit, and you know, ultimately win the tournament. It's hard to describe. That feeling is unbelievable. Just knowing how much work you put in over the whole season for the seniors the last four or five years, all that work to get back there again for us, which was our goal since we got out there two years ago. So it really, it's, it's hard to describe. It's just a great, great euphoric ex experience. So Minnesota State off to the national championship. And as we take this program, it hasn't been decided yet. The Mavericks are one and one, but still very much alive. They did. They lost their uh, first game by one run and came back and won their second game. So in a, a double elimination tournament, they're still alive and uh, playing. So follow us on, uh, go to our website and you can follow uh, how the Mavericks are doing. That's northernsun.org. You'll get the updates on that and everything in the Northern Sun Conference. Well, great student athletes seems to be the theme that we talk about on this show, Division Two, and not just great athletes but student athletes such as again is the case another very prestigious award for the northern sun for minnesota state mankato and for ben keller a sophomore catcher on their team he was awarded the elite 89 at the at the uh, national world series mike what's the elite 89 it's actually a very prestigious award and and maybe not what you might be thinking the elite 89 award goes to the highest grade point average of any athlete taking part in a national tournament and while for, we mentioned Ben Keller of Mankato State, Minnesota State Mankato, getting this award, this is not the first time this year, and certainly not the first time ever, the Northern Sun has achieved that honor. All Ben did to win this award was, uh, he's a mechanical engineering student, he carries a 4.0, he's a sophomore. That's all he had to do to win this award, you know, to get there. So, uh, mm -hmm. congratulations, yeah. Ben. All he had to do, yeah. A as you mentioned, it is the <laughs> second award, uh, second Elite 89 award this year. Cody Lensing, a, re a wrestler from Augustana, was also awarded that. Cody ends up being the uh, Britain Award winner for the conference, which means the top student athlete, male student athlete in the conference. And Kendra Huddle, a softball player from Mankato, who was an Elite 88 Award winner last year, uh, is also the uh, Kelly Award winner in the, as the top female student athlete in the Northern Sun this year. So Ben Keller, who also hit 353, by the way, and as a catcher was a big leader or is a leader on that team. Congratulations to him. All these awards, including the Britton Kelly Award, really emphasize student athlete in the Northern Sun. Well, we're so fortunate in, in, in Division II to, to be able to keep life in a balance, and we talk about that all the time, but it just uh, it's examples like this that our student athletes just continue to show us what it's all about, about being a strong Division II student athlete. One of the other things about the Division II athletics and the Northern Sun is that if in high school you didn't blossom yet, you may get an opportunity to go all the way big league in Division II. And this is the case with Brian Lippicott. Lippicott is at Concordia St. Paul, was only looked at by one school when he came out of high school, but became uh, quite the college player and is continuing to get better every day. Darren Wilson has a story on Brian Lippincott. 
Senior Brian Lippincott is a finance major, which will come in handy when he soon cashes his draft signing bonus. He's being looked at by 12 teams, including the Twins. This is my 13th season, and Brian is the best hitter we've ever had here. The numbers confirm that opinion. Lippincott is hitting 555 with eight home runs this year. He's been intentionally walked more often than he's been struck out. Basically what I just try to do is go get my work in every day. I'll go get early work in off the tee, um, get some front toss, come in, you take your BP round seriously in practice, and that's, I mean, it's there's nothing you can do to maintain something like that. It just, I guess it just happens. The thing that amazes me is he just squares the ball up so often. I mean, he doesn't get flare hits. He either hits it hard or, or or at somebody or the ball lands, uh, what he's doing is ridiculous. Even more ridiculous is the fact that Lippincott hit only one home run in high school and Concordia was his only scholarship offer. He matched that home run total while our camera was rolling last week. He hit a grand slam against Winona State. That was the first time I've ever done that in my career. That was pretty cool. I'm just looking for something up and something to drive. He'll be looking for something else to drive when he goes professional. He certainly has earned it. In St. Paul, Darren Wolfson, 5 Eyewitness News. Not only uh, hard work, hard work paying off on the diamond, but boy, what this, what Brian Lippincott does in the classroom. It is. almost sounds like a broken record, mm -hmm. Mike. Uh, Brian is a 4-0 student at Concordia. He's a academic All-American, 2011-12, uh, the, the top All-American that there is. And uh, again, just continues to shine on the field and in the classroom. And who knows where those big league dreams might take him too. Let's wish Good for luck, the best. Good luck, Brian. Well, certainly the Northern Sun Conference always involved in their communities, helping clean up and add to what is the atmosphere of each individual city. We'll tell you more about that as we continue on the Northern Sun Showcase. The Best Western Kelly in St. Paul and the Best Western Kelly in of St. Cloud. Conveniently located at I-94 and Marion Street in St. Paul, just minutes from Concordia University. And at 104th Avenue South in St. Cloud, just minutes from St. Cloud State University. With newly refurbished guest rooms, restaurants and bars, indoor swimming pools, free high-speed internet and parking, exercise rooms, meeting and banquet rooms as well as catering. For reservations in St. Paul, call 651-227-8711. And in St. Cloud, 320-253-0606. Remember to ask about the NSIC team and administrator discounts. I chose Division II because athletes graduate at a higher rate. I can stay closer to home and be an important part of the community. I chose Division II because I can double major. And take part in campus activities. I chose Division II because classrooms are smaller. Students have more time with their instructors. And I can compete for a national championship. I chose Division II for all these reasons and more. I chose. I chose. I chose. I chose, I chose Division II. We all train differently. It's about numbers. What works for you might not work for your teammates. The same thing goes for staying hydrated. As you compete, you sweat, and it leaves your body at a unique rate. At a certain point before the game's even over, you sweat so much that your performance suffers, unless your numbers are right. Through superior research, we've unlocked the formula to optimize those numbers. The math for you is simple. The Northern Sun Intercollegiate Conference is a proud member of NCAA Division II Athletics. This week's Northern Sun Showcase is brought to you by Wilson, the official football, basketball, and baseball of the NSIC. By LJK Companies Incorporated, a full service solution to your team's lodging needs. By Impact Sports, contact Impact Sports to get your swoosh on. And by East Sultan's Web Services, we make having a website easy and affordable. For more information, visit eSultans.com. Thanks again for joining us here on the Northern Sun Showcase. And throughout this year and previous years, we tell stories about the student athletes, the coaches, the communities, all coming together to do good things and to really make that experience of the campus and the community come together. And Butch, this again is another example of seeing the two intertwining well in the community. Northern Sun started a, a SAC Summit, an annual SAC Summit this past year, this past week, or, or in the, a couple weeks ago was uh, the third annual that we did. It was hosted by Southwest Minnesota State and their Associate Athletic Director, Roley Muller. Uh, we allow each school to invite three student athletes from their SAC program to attend. Uh, it's a, a weekend where they get together, they do team building, they do community engagement, uh, they listen to uh, a few, uh, some speakers uh, with topics that are on leadership especially. 
and and they also had go through a business session of, of what's happening in the northern sun so uh, a very uh, you know a, a program that we are really enthused about we had 45 student athletes that participated in it this year as I said at Southwest Minnesota State and it, it was successful thank you and Melissa Seawick from our office kind of headlines it. So they all come in, in many cases rivals, and they leave as friends and companions and, well, cohorts as doing something good in the community. And let's hear from the cleaning up the river crew in Marshall this past spring. You get 20, 30 people out there for a few hours, you, you can make a big difference, but um, we're all fit people, we're all athletic, uh, we're in very good positions in our lives, and so it's easy for us to give back, and if it can make a difference, it's for the better. It's really interesting to get to meet some of the student athletes um, in most cases, we're not necessarily friends when we're competing against each other, but here it's great to get to know them. There's a lot of cool, cool people, and I'm very excited about the new friends I've made. Which, while the SAC Summit was a big success again, all throughout the conference, the, 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 the athletic programs are involved with the community, in many cases with youth bringing them up to, to learn the, the particular sports, but making an impact. And let's talk a little bit more about that, too. We, we could go on and on with just about all of our schools that participate in sports programs one way or another, but uh, Southwest Minnesota State has, has really gone in heavily into the in community engagement. Mm -hmm. uh, they hosted a, a smokes fest during uh, one of their football games, which means it's a, a cook-off, mm -hmm. a barbecue, and for that they were awarded the uh, an award from the $500 award from the NCAA as having the best event in our conference. And, also, uh, their football team and, and head coach Corey Sauter uh, has spent some time with the youth in, in Marshall. And let's hear from Coach Sauter about uh, how it is to give back to the community and get everybody in the area involved. This is a clinic that we've been doing for several years now. I have uh, came to Southwest Minnesota State in 2008 and uh, we started it way back then and uh, we've continued that tradition all the way through. We like to do one in the spring as well as the fall. Well, the big thing is just getting our players connected with the youth of Marshall. I, I really think that our players are, are role models for, for these young kids and uh, I tell you what, our, our players enjoy it almost probably just as much as, as the, the kids and uh, so it's a win-win it's a for both sides. Butch, what a great year it's been all around. It really has and uh, unfortunately, Mike, this is our last show of the season, but personally I'd like to thank you for being the co-host on the show and being such a great ambassador to the Northern Sun. I'd also like to thank all our athletic administrators, our coaches and our student athletes for giving us such an exciting year of competition. As we look back, we see two national team championships. We see four individual championships, champions, and we see one relay team that brought home a national championship. We had uh, five NCAA regional champions. We had 27 different teams that competed in the region for those championships. 51 All-Americans, two elite 89 winners, and maybe the best of all, 1,228 <laughs> NSIC all academic members. And there still may be more as we tape this program. Minnesota State Baseball still in the national championships. Find out all the information at northernsun.org. Links to all the member schools keep you up to date. Also look for us on Facebook and Twitter for all the very latest. And I have to personally thank Nick Corner, also Aaron Lind and Melissa, uh, Melissa Seawick for doing such a great job of giving us the information to tell you the stories of Division II athletics. Thanks to all of you for watching and we hope to see you again next year. And for the Commissioner Butch Raymond, I'm Mike Woodley. You've been watching the Northern Sun Showcase.